And welcome to Figments in Time podcast. I'm Lewis. And I'm Val. And today we're going to talk a little bit about our most recent Disney trip. We made a lot of crazy promises <laughs> in the episodes leading up to this. We did. And we talked about a lot of food. It was quite, quite a trip. First, we're going to talk about just for just just for a moment. Why has it been so long since our last episode? Why didn't we come home all excited to do the thing and do the talking about the, you might hear it in my voice, maybe just a little bit. At least you know? we have a voice now. At least we have a voice now. So we came home sick again. <laughs> we always something going on in this family, breaking something, sick in something. And we just couldn't do it. We tried. I tried. I, I we came home. I promised I was going to make a one episode by myself. Till we got better. And then I just didn't. I didn't do anything. We didn't do anything for a week. We talked with the Dillos about the meetup. We'll talk about the meetup next time we have an episode. A little more. Today we're just going to talk about things we did. But that's it. But we're not going to let it kill us this time. Last time we came, we got sick. We didn't We didn't do any more podcasts for a long time. This time we're going to keep doing it. Just for that trip. Because we like talking about Disney. It's fun. We do. That's all we're going to say about that. So we're going to talk about two things tonight. First, we're going to talk about Epcot food and wine and the things we tasted yeah. and the things we promised we were going to try. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about the not-so-scary party and, again, the foods we were going to try, the things we did try, and a little bit about that party. We were super excited about the Food and Wine Festival. As a matter of fact, Epcot was our very first visit. For this particular trip, we stayed at Pop Century, and we had not stayed at Pop in a really long time. But this is where the, the the folks that we were meeting for our Dillo's Diz meetup were staying. And so also, I will have to say, Lewis was very excited about being at a Skyliner resort. And Skyliner he, he loves the Skyliner. I am still on the fence about it. But I will have to say it was pretty convenient. And so our very first day, what we did was we hopped on the Skyliner and we headed into Epcot. And I'll say it was really weird to be going into Epcot through the World Showcase as opposed to through Future World like we usually do. Um, but it was a lot of fun to just be able to jump right into food and wine as soon as we got there. And when we were talking about what we were going to have to eat for the very first thing, I just said, you know what? We're here. Let's just jump into it and let's go get the wings. Okay, but before we do this, let's just let's just take two <laughs> seconds to talk about pop. Oh, okay. This was a thoroughly awesome stay we had. I mean, the we room did, was nice. As it you, was I've nice. been up pictures of the ambiance, the 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 yo-yo, the eight-track tape of of the smooth sounds. But the room itself was just really nice. I mean, I Pop Century is no incredibly photogenic. It's it's just it's a beautiful resort for fun. It's just got a lot of fun landmarks, a lot of fun things. And we have not been there since, like I said, it's been years since we stayed at Pop Century. Um, I, I think we've probably mentioned before we're DVC members, so we typically stay at the DVC resort. And so it was just, it was neat to see they, they refurbed the rooms since we were there last and there's just so much storage. And even though the room is not huge, we had plenty of space for all of our staff to be very comfortable um, for my scooter, which always takes up a huge amount of the room and, and it, it fit in well. So I was, I, I will have to say I was very impressed with Pop Century it's not always my favorite resort because I don't think the beds are super comfortable and, and, and it is noisier. You can hear things really well through the walls, that kind of thing. But I will have to say we were very comfortable for our week's vacation and we enjoyed staying there. If I could use my DVC points proportionally to what I can use it at other deluxe resorts, I'd be staying there every time. I'm just saying, I, I really liked it. I liked the Skyliner, right? The Skyliner was fantastic. If you want to go to the parks, I, I was just, I was at, at the, um, we went to Hollywood Studios one morning and I just came back, came back to the room and I just hopped back on the Skyliner and took off, which is fantastic. Yeah. It's delightful. Yeah, if, you, 
that thing went all over to all over the resorts. Disney World would be a fantastically different place. If so, you follow us on Instagram, you know that I did a lot of video from the Skyliner, mostly because I needed the distraction because flying on the Skyliner makes me super nervous. Um, it makes me a little dizzy. And so I can't really enjoy it as much as Lewis enjoys it. But I will have to say it is incredibly convenient. Most of the time, it was a really quick way to get back and forth from the resort to the park and back. And so there were only a few times that it was a little busy and it, and it was a longer wait. But again, that was the scooter's fault um, more so than that was the Skyliner's fault. So I will say the one thing we did wrong that we should we didn't, we didn't learn the first time it happened. And we did it again and we did it a couple more times, I think. But is that if you are using a scooter, they, they only take about a scooter every minute. So at the end of it's the night. one every 10 of the gondolas is a scooter gondola. Yeah. And usually the timer says about 90 seconds. And it takes a little bit longer than that. Yeah. So if there's 10 scooters and it's 90 seconds each, that's 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's a little longer and it was a couple of times, yeah. it's longer. Usually, you know, there's there's almost no wait between people getting on Skyliner on foot. There was there was times at the end of the night where they would they would get three they would they would stop three gondolas and put three scooters in to keep the thing going. It's, it was it was not super efficient in that respect. But almost any other time other than the end of the day, there weren't there weren't very many scooters there, and it it still was very fast. All right, so that's that's talking about. Pop Century. I didn't want to get, I didn't want to move past that. Too I know. Quickly. I'm sorry. Pop Century was a, it was a revelation. It was, well, <laughs> it was it better was, than the first time we went. I will well, say. And we, we've stayed the there a few times. And, and like I said, the rooms are so much more efficient, so much nicer than they were. If you maybe did Pop Century in the past and you didn't love it, you know, you might want to give it another shot. Um, because like I said, it was, um, it was very different than what I remembered. And so it was so much better than I was expecting it to be. So we were pleasantly surprised by it. All right. So we hopped on the Skyliner first day. We got, yeah. got your scooter. We zipped over to Epcot. And then we tried. The first thing we tried was, was wings. Yeah. I, just, I wanted to get it over with. <laughs> I just wanted to get it done. <laughs> and I took some video of this experience and i will share it with you right now all right so that every it looks really good um it was in the odyssey uh, if you know the park very well it's sort of the transition from the front of the park into the world showcase um on the left side of the park and so they have this whole section set up for beaker and bunsen honeydew and these weird concoctions that they've put together and I just wanted to get it done and over with. <laughs> it is, these are experimental wings, so. Okay, so today we're going to try out our things we said we were gonna try, and we're gonna have the peanut butter and jelly wings and the scorch and hot wings, and just for fun, the pickle milkshake. And why are we doing this? For the content. She doesn't get the cross, Aww. for the content. All right, so the big thing is we're gonna Film the reactions. I think we should start with a pickle milkshake because that's where I'm going. Uh. Just a hint of dill. I think she's gonna like it. That may, that may answer the question of whether she's a fan or not. She doesn't realize this is a podcast either, so she's just making faces. All right, so next, since you have that flavor in your mouth, go ahead and try one of the peanut butter and jelly wings. That's a lot of peanut butter. It's weird too, because I assumed there'd be a lot of jelly. And I don't think she's gonna eat any more of it, so. 
It's just like somebody accidentally took the wing in to paint it better is all I can tell you. The jelly part doesn't taste bad. I mean, it gets to the sweetness, but the... A lot of peanut butter. I'm sipping the dill shake while she's talking, so. I'm not a big fan of the mixing of the flavors, so no. <laughs> no. This is. No. No. Okay, now it's my turn. I'm gonna start here with peanut butter and jelly rings because that sounds ridiculous. And it tastes ridiculous. Not bad. Certainly edible. I will certainly eat these. Since I paid seven fifty for them, but I would not order these from a shop ever again. Now we're gonna try the things that I I was the most interested in: the unnecessarily hot wings. They're a little cold. Are they unnecessarily hot? They're quite hot. I feel it all the way in. Wow. For Disney food, this is hot. This is more than I would get when I was when I buy hot chicken, Nashville hot chicken. So I don't even think I'm gonna finish these. They're really cooking my face. My entire lips are just numb. And I have a decently high tolerance to, to heat. But yeah, unless you have a high tolerance to heat, when they said unnecessarily hot, I feel like they meant actually hot. All right, it's time for the Muppets. Yes, that is hot wings. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, goodness. I'm glad to have you here in the Caribbean lab, and we can still stand even in one piece. Let's start our next experiment, shall we? Okay, so the final verdict, peanut butter and jelly wings, uh, edible. I ate all of them. Val did not like them. <laughs> she just didn't like the flavors. The hot wings, incredibly hot for my taste. And like I said, I like Nashville hot chicken. So that's a, that's a difference. Pickle shake for me, uh, well, not so much. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was. It was fun to try some things that were different, but no, I wasn't a fan. And I'll say, I, honestly, I'm just not a big mixed flavors kind of person. So the peanut butter was just a little overwhelming. I think the jelly by itself was would have would have been more enjoyable, but the but the peanut butter it was just not what you were expecting. I had heard it was weird from I yeah. think uh, Justin Monterey or the Dawes, yeah. one of the two, or maybe both. Yeah. So I, I kind of knew it was going to be weird. Yeah. yeah. But I thought it would be a weird that wouldn't make you go. Yeah. Right. I was hoping it'd be just like a. This is weird. Not a, <laughs> not a pucker your face yeah. up like it was going to explode. I, I wasn't expecting it to be very good. But and and the same for the pickle shake, the dill with the sweet. I just I didn't think it mixed super well. Although you enjoyed it a lot, you were. You, I wouldn't you say I enjoyed thing. it a lot, but I did like it enough that I would, if I was there and I was getting something, I would consider getting it again. Hmm. As opposed to the wings, I would not get, I'd be more apt to get the hot wings than the peanut butter wings again. Even if it hurts, even though it hurts, right? I'd be more apt to get that. Well, at that point, we decided we really needed to get, we did a few things in, in, in which I keep calling Future World. I know I need to learn the new names if anybody has already learned the new names. I, I think in my mind, I'm not going to learn the new names until the park is complete. And then I will learn it in my head. But we decided to grab some lunch because we knew it was going to be just about time to head back over to check into our room. And we wanted to be able to unpack and get our room set up. So we actually did something we'd not done before. We went to the Connections Cafe and had lunch at the Connections Cafe after we rode a few attractions at Epcot. And I was very surprised it was good. I was not sure if I was going to like it or not just because, I, you know, for me, at, at Walt Disney World, counter service can be hit or miss. 
And so you just kind of never know what you're going to get when you go. But we just did the very simple, just some chicken sandwiches and fries. And it was, it was really good. I was, I was impressed with it. Agreed. And it wasn't super expensive. And if you take into consideration, you're at a theme park. We did those things. And then we went back on the Skyliner, back to the resort, got settled, and then came back again to the World Showcase. And that's where I got to have my favorite thing. And somehow we have zero pictures of it. I am very confused by that. I remember setting up the picture because I actually worked to make sure that it looked kind of cute. And because I'm not very good at that. And so I, because I, I usually don't think, I'm not like Lewis, I don't think to take pictures. And I've seen so many people do such a great job with how they present the food from food and wine, just so you get the Epcot feel of it and all of that. And so I remember taking time to do that, but I'm, I'm wondering if I just, I thought I snapped the picture and maybe I didn't. So I, I don't know what happened, but I do not have a picture of the filet with the um, cheese soup and pretzel bread from Canada. But I will say that even though I don't have a picture of it, it was so good. Was it different this year? It seemed like it was maybe a bigger more contiguous piece of meat. Um, I, I, like I, I, I think that I just really lucked out because I saw some pictures from other people who've had it and their pieces of meat looked a lot smaller. I feel like I got a really pretty large piece of meat. And um, and then it had it had a potato, like some some mashed potatoes kind of for the side. And it was just really, really good. And then they always give you a really good size piece of the pretzel bread. And then of course, the soup is just a little cup of the soup, but oh, it's just so good. I love it so much. I, on the other hand, did get a picture, which is funny because I don't always take pictures of food. I have a hard time remembering that. Usually by the time I've gotten some food and I'm sitting there looking at it, I'm eating it. I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> so I got the um, poutine from the refreshment port with the braised beef, and it was good. It was almost too good. That's It's almost like I, I wasn't eating a, a French fry-based meal here. Because it's got, you know, the braised beef and the, the gravy and the, the squeaky cheese, cheese curds. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's, the good fries. A lot. Right and the there. pickles. And a little pickle in there you can see. Good, good stuff. That is something I'm apt to get again when I'm walking by. All right. So we had that meal. Yeah. And then we kept moving around. Lewis actually we- had a return time at this point for Guardians of the Galaxy. And I did not want to ride again this, this visit because it did make me a little dizzy. So I decided to have a treat while Lewis went to ride Guardians. Saw it as I went by and I just couldn't pass it up. It is Lamington from the Australia booth. And so it's basically vanilla cake with a raspberry filling and it has the chocolate with some coconut. And I have to say that was one of the best pieces of cake I have ever had. It was so good. I love chocolate and raspberry together. So that is, is one of the reasons why I wanted to try it. But it was just the cake was moist. The raspberry was just enough with the chocolate. It was perfect. I loved it. All right. So then we continued our challenges. This next one is going to be Valerie trying the Kenyan barbecued beef. All right, so now we're here trying out Valerie's choice for the one she liked, she was most interested in that we've never had before. This is the Kenyan barbecued, coffee barbecued beef. Let's see if she likes this slightly better than the peanut butter and jelly wings. Give us some more details here. It doesn't have a coffee flavor to it. It's a really um, tender piece of beef. Very well flavored. It's excellent. It was incredible. The, the meat was tender and it was wonderfully flavored. It was on um, a bed of mealy pap that was incredibly good with the vegetables that it had sort of mixed in with it. 
And I, I would like to have that as a whole meal. I, I want a restaurant where I can go in and buy that as the dinner and have that as a whole meal because it was really that good. It was incredibly good. So I was very excited. It, I w will get that again anytime they have it because it was that great. She did better than I did on my best, my favorite choice. But next up, we're going to Spain and I'm going to try olives. Okay, I'm going to try the charcuterie, which is going to be good. And she's going to be like, can I have some of it? I'm like, no, except for the olives. I hate olives. I actually had put together a video to do last year of this. And the first thing I said in there was like, no, I'm not going to stop at this booth because there's olives in there. So let's see how I like it. This is where I get lucky in that we're going to separate here in a minute. And she's going to go see the Eat to the Beat concert, which we have a couple of I, pictures of. I did the one thing that, that I tell people never to do. I actually went to the park and prepared. I had not, I think I always forget that they have concerts for food and wine. And I don't know why I forget that, but I, I, I forget it every year. And I don't think to check who's going to be there. And so I had not looked at who was going to be there for the evening and something made me look and I happened to notice that it was Mercy Me, that Mercy Me was playing and it was a band that I, that I have enjoyed their music a lot in the past. And I thought, Oh, I wonder if I could just scoot into the back because I knew that, you know, the lines are always really long to get in, to get a space for the concerts. And so if you don't work it out ahead of time, then, you know, it's, it's very rare that you can get in to see them but I thought, well, maybe I can just kind of park my scooter at the very back behind the theater, you know, there at and, and find a place that I can kind of catch it. And I was just very lucky in that when I went up, the the gentleman at the, the entrance, he said, hey, I have one more of the scooter spots here in the back if you want to pull in and watch the concert. And so I missed the very beginning of it, but I was able to to listen to most of it and they did a great job. It was a lot of fun. And I missed Spain and the charcuterie because I decided to run do that while Lewis stopped to get a little bit more snack. So snack was it? Well, was charcuterie is typically a snack. <laughs> it's not a full right. meal. So let's see the photographic evidence that I did actually eat an olive okay i promised i would try an olive i have an olive i think two olives here and i i hate olives but maybe i love them we'll see i still hate olives and i really regret right now that I didn't do that before I ate the meat. I still want a piece of cheese left. Oh. I did eat it. I've now become an olive lover. I don't like strong flavors. And this video is probably unusable because there's a concert going on behind me. But I'm gonna have that flavor in my, in my mouth all night. So you did try the olive. I did. And I did how was, regret. How was the rest of the charcuterie though? Did it, it all taste good. like olive? It's, it's, you know, meat and cheese with some um, vinaigrette. It was fantastic. Yeah. It's something I would have gotten maybe. Uh, olives have this like tendency to overpower everything in their path. I know. It's like pizza. When you get pizza and you can't pull the olives off because the pizza is... It permeates the subject of the pizza. And see, and he won't even let me do half olives because he says it gets over on the other side. So I don't get to have olives at all unless we're eating pizza with somebody else that will go in with me to get the olives. And yeah, he, he has this very strict rule about olives. All right. So that was our food and wine experience. And it was so we didn't eat a lot around the world. No, I wish we could have tried a few more things. There were a few more things that I was really hoping to try, but we, we literally just had this one part of a day. We didn't have even a full day. We weren't there from open to close. We had to leave for a little while and come back. So 
we didn't really get to spend a lot of time at food and wine, but um, I always enjoy it. And it's always a lot of fun when we can do it. And so I, you know, I look forward to it every year. And so I, I wish that we had had some more time because there were a few other things that I really, I, I wanted to try that French fry flight um, that had the sweet potato fries and things that, you know, there were, so there were a few things that I really wanted to try that we just, I mean, we just didn't have the time for. He is going down in a couple of weeks for work. So he's going to get to hang out at the parks a little bit more. So he's going to get to try some more things from food and wine. But one thing I'm not going to be able to try anything more from is the not so scary party. So we went to this on the Friday night of the week and we went with friends. We'll talk more about that and our, our squad goals for the night, but such a fun night. Luckily, one of the people with us, Lexi, bought one of the things that we were supposed to try, and that was um, that was sweet potato fries. And yeah. it's because yeah, because we talked about the sweet potato fries because they had the fry flight at Food and Wine that we didn't get to try that I wanted to, but they did have at the um out it's an outpost right that's in Adventureland. Yes, they had some sweet potato fries that had marshmallow and butterscotch and so i we found it interesting and we had talked about trying it because he picked that for me because he knows i don't like marshmallow and he knows i don't like butterscotch and lexi was sweet enough to say well here i because i knew i wasn't gonna eat very much of it and so we just he she just shared one fry with me and so i had a chance to so let's see how that goes I did video of this. It's a very quick video, but it will, it'll explain her feelings pretty quickly on. on I didn't even remember he took a video, so. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Don't you lie. The fry is good. The marshmallow. Oh, now, how can you not like marshmallow? I get maybe butterscotch. That's that's an interesting flavor, but marshmallow is a very simple, just sugar flavor. I am, am not a butterscotch fan at all. And I like marshmallow in certain consistencies and situations. I'm, I'm really kind of funny about that. And so I just, I, again, it goes back to why I didn't like the pickle milkshake or the peanut butter and jelly wings. I just, I don't, love mixing a lot of flavors together and I love sweet potato fries so much and I truly like them best just plain I don't even dip them when they usually come with the cinnamon sugar butter concoction I don't even dip them in that so I I, I like them pretty plain and so like I said the sweet potato was fry was really good but yeah I could live without the butterscotch and the marshmallow here's a life hack if the person who you're sitting with does not use their cinnamon butter on their fries. They work great on tortilla chips. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, he usually takes my concoction when we do that. But All right, so we had a few other target foods for the night. Yes. And one, and, and the rest we, we just couldn't do. We went to get the Hades cone, the habanero soft serve with Dole Whip. We went there more than once multiple times <laughs> and there was one time and it was it was always down and the, first the very time, first time though <laughs> there was legitimately a person out front of this place encouraging people to come purchase the hades cone she had a little sign that was all she was doing was standing out in the middle of the walkway with this sign telling everyone we have the hades cone here and i had like a monty python moment because I went in and I was like, do they have it? And they were like, no, it's broken. So I come back to the person and I say, you know, they're not actually serving this. And she was like, I was just told to stand out here with this sign. <laughs> and if you've ever seen the, the one of this, it was a Monty Python sketch where he's just told to say these words and he doesn't know what they mean <laughs> over and over. It's just exactly that feeling. Like, why are you doing this? I don't know. They eventually got rid of that person. That person was not standing out there the whole night. No. But every so time we that. went back by, they were working on the machine, but they could not get it to work. It was so not we, just me of the group that was trying to get this either. It was multiple of us who really right. wanted this. 
we had we had all we had already kind of talked about it before the trip that we you know that that was like one of those treats that we really wanted to try and so um we were disappointed and then sometimes it's not it's it's me right i'm i'm a little lazy if i miss something and i i'm on the other side of the park i won't go back but i we were with energetic people who continued to go back and try and try yeah. and it always just missed it yes the other thing we tried to try was the the chicken sandwich that the had jalapenos on it mm-hmm. and a couple of us were at the at the register and we were like we went to cosmic rays we that's why you know we we went we we kind of knew we were probably going to go there for dinner we we did go there for dinner we were like okay we i want the spicy chicken sandwich we're good and i'm in line and it's a couple of minutes till six and we're like do, do you have this and they're like no and the person looked up and she was, she was looking at the menu just like we were no we don't have that so right after we finish our order it changes the menu changes at six o'clock and it pops up and I've already ordered and already paid, you know, I'm not going to take back a chicken sandwich and try to get it, but it was so funny. A couple of other people actually did get it. Yeah, they were I was really say, so half of our group got the special spicy chicken sandwich and the rest of us got just their regular chicken sandwich. I will say neither one of them were that awesome. I, I, we did not hear good things about the spicy chicken sandwich no. and the regular chicken sandwich. It was good. I mean, when you go to cosmic rays, when, when you go to the, the not so scary party, Food is the biggest problem because yeah. all the party goers are coming in. We're there at about five o'clock, five thirty. People want to eat and get ready because the party's starting at seven. Yeah. And Cosmic Rays is just a a, a wash with people. And, and not everything I, is been, open. Not all of the counter service places yeah. are open, so it's not like a normal park running day where you can just go to whatever place you want to to eat. They have only very specific places open for the party. And they stopped doing mobile order too, mm-hmm. which is, which was, is painful. I mean, anyhow, you, I'm so very spoiled by the mobile ordering at Disney because you just sit down, you mobile order, yeah. it tell you it's ready, you go up and you get it. You don't stand in any lines, you know, two or three minutes. Sometimes, sometimes they haven't even put it together, but they put it together pretty quick once you get to the, get to the front. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so those are the things we did not get. Valerie found her. My new favorite thing in the world. Queen of Hearts slushy. Yeah, I didn't take a very good picture of it. It was getting dark. We actually, there were a group of us that were wanting to try it. And we had stopped to do that earlier, actually, before we went to get the Hades cone. And the line was just really super long. And everybody was anxious for the Hades cone. And we were like, oh, well, we'll come back. And so when we were coming back through, I had stopped to get some candy in one of the little candy trick-or-treating areas. And my really sweet friend, Nate, he went and stood in line and got me the Queen of Hearts slushie because he knew that I was really wanting to try it. And I will have to say, oh, my goodness, that was one of the best slushies I've ever had. The whipped cream was incredibly good. It was sort of a, a cherry slushy with like a black cherry like syrup in it and then it had the little chocolate crown on the top and I I gave uh, Nate and Lexi actually ate the chocolate crown but um I I they decided to go ride Space Mountain after this and I chose not to ride Space Mountain and so I sat and drank that whole thing by myself it was so good that I would love to have another one right now. It was that good. I love it. See, she kept trying to give it to me. I'm not going to drink all this. I'm not going to drink all this. I didn't didn't think I could drink it all because I I can't do that much sweet. And so I I, I didn't think I could drink all of it. I was going to share it with people. We were going to split it and we got, we got, we'd even saved cups to split it. And, and then everybody left me and I was like, okay. And I kept thinking, oh, I'm I'm not going to, but it was so good. I drank it. It was great. So yeah, we were on Space Mountain, which was very interesting. And I would always say it's Space Mountain in the dark, but every time I've been on Space Mountain in the dark, it's been brighter than normal. And this time they had a bunch, a couple of lights set up, it seemed, that was illuminating things. And it, it gave it a nice eerie feeling and the sound was good. It was, it was, it's much scarier when there's enough light to see the infrastructure around you. I will yeah. say that. It really is. Um, 
And they, I have written it before like that. And it's similar to that. And it really is a lot scarier when you can see the track. It really can be freaky. So we rode that. We rode Tron a couple of times. Um, if you're at the, if you're there on the party day, you may be able to get a, 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 not a lightning lane, but a virtual queue space. Check that out right when you get in the park there. Um, we were able I think to get because a, people are leaving because they know they're leaving because of the party and it's just a slower day. So there's not as many people take the second virtual queue. And so we got really lucky. And so that gave us the opportunity to ride it twice. And it was a lot of fun. So we were able to buy an individual lightning lane for everybody. And we got, we got to ride that. We got the virtual queue um, from the day, from the early day one, from like the one o'clock mm -hmm. drop yeah. that hadn't been completely taken. And then at six o'clock, there's another drop for, party goers. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty fantastic thing. Tron, something we'll talk about more, but needless to say, it's a fantastic coaster. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely worth getting up at seven and getting a lightning lane, a, a virtual yeah. queue. Yeah. Lightning lane. Now I think you'd have to ride it. I, it's not one that I'm going to want to repeat over and over. Unlike guardians of galaxy, which is absolutely fantastic. And I would ride Many, many times. Many, many times in a row. We then went to Haunted Mansion, which was really cool. A couple of changes this year. I, I love the Haunted Mansion during the Not So Scary Party because, and I know a lot of people think, oh, well, you can ride the Haunted Mansion anytime. Um, and, and everybody knows it's my favorite attraction. But for the night of Not So Scary all of the butlers and maids are in extra makeup for the evening and it, they just make it a little spookier and there's Carlotta. Moved this year into the queue, which was an interesting, interesting change. Yeah. She's in the graveyard. You can tell she's, she's there in the graveyard as you get ready to go into the doors of the attraction. Um, they're near where, you know, Madame Leota's tombstone and, and others are buried. And so she's sort of there. I've been seeing some pictures of her with the butler as well. And we did not see a butler with her, but we did get to stand there for a few minutes and, and hear Carlotta talk to guests. And it's just one of my favorite things to do. The only thing that I, I if, if I have to have a, a complaint about it, the only thing is that you feel very pressured to move on. You don't get to stand and listen to her speak as long and maybe that's why that that may be part of the reason why they do that is because they they want to move you along faster because i do think that sometimes you did have a lot of people kind of slowing the line stopping to to see carlotta when she was out front by the horse and carriage but um but she's still just a treat to see anytime of course a couple of us got disconnected from the group because of that we were taking pictures and all of a sudden, the door is slammed shut, and we're like, oh, well. <laughs> but then we get to see the, as she was mentioning, the, oh. the things like this. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're all decked out a little bit more. They're not as fun as they used to be, but they're still a hoot. Yeah, they are. And then we did the big four, the big three, sorry, the big three, the yeah. last three things. And one of the things we thought this year, and I don't remember – we went last year, right? Yes. It felt less busy this year. But it, it's so it, hard to tell because we were also with very energetic people. <laughs> we were moving around the park a whole lot more. I think last year, too, one of the things um, you have to understand, Not So Scary is my favorite night of the year. I, I, I love this event. And so typically what I will do is I will go super early for the first parade and find my spot. And so I will sit, take an hour and a half of our night sitting, you know, in the spot waiting for the parade, the fireworks, um, and the Sanderson sister show. And so that usually cuts into our night and everybody in the group wanted to see these things. 
but I don't think that they cared as much about having just that perfect spot. And we were having so much fun. I was fine with it. We, we ran around, we did stuff and I was actually beginning to worry just a little bit. I thought, well, maybe we're not going to see everything, but I was like determined that I, I definitely wanted to at least get a glimpse of the parade. And so we sort of waited until the last minute after the parade, the first parade, we went ahead and just kind of thought, well, let's see if we can get a spot for the fireworks. And we were able just to walk up to the perfect spot for the fireworks because the parade had come through and, and literally they were opening the streets back up for people to, to come out. And we were able just to walk right up and find a spot in front of the castle that ended up being a perfect spot to see the fireworks and then to watch the Sanderson sister show. Our, our stress became, okay, now where are we going to go to find a spot for the second parade? And so I was a little nervous about that. And then Lewis came to get us and said, just follow me. And we found the perfect spot that wasn't super crowded. There weren't a lot of people right beside the fire station at the front of the park to just have the perfect view of the not so scary parade. Yep. So we were able to do all three, the fireworks, the Sanderson show, and then the parade. Yeah. Had a pretty good view. Got my head Mickey. I, I captured with the great shot. It's a good location. It's yeah. not the best location. Being up close is not the best location. Certainly not for pictures, but it's a good location. You get a good sense of the show. You know, I don't have any good pictures of the animatronic Jack, but you oh, can he's see a puppet. him on the stage. He's not animatronic. He's a puppet. Little puppet. You're saying there's people I, running it? Yes. There's a person behind him that's, that's moving him. Yeah, it's very cool. All right. So we saw, we caught the fireworks. And one of the things about the fireworks is you can sit and, and find yourself a spot hours early, or you can come 15 minutes early and find a decent spot too. People think that, that if they set here, that you can't get in front of them, but somebody's getting in front of them. They're going to make you fill yeah. in all the space. Yeah. Somebody's going to fill they, in the space if you don't take it. And the way they change things is they, they let you be on the street during the, mm -hmm. during the fireworks. So they you pretty much fill in everything. Right. So every spot. So just work your way in. Don't, don't stand in front of a kid, right? I mean, that's that's wrong. Because then that kid's going to go up on someone's shoulders and no one's going to be able to see. But, you know, you can find a good place. If you want to find a place near the back and you want to uh, down the street view, usually about five minutes before the fireworks start, you can get in the back of one of the groups. Like if there's a walkway, you can get in the back of that walkway because people will leave space and you'll have a really, really great view. Yeah. So the fireworks are always great. I mean, they're not the they're not the fireworks we knew as our favorite fireworks, but right, they are they're, they're still good. Yeah, I mean, anytime good. something blows up, I'm pretty happy. I'm just saying. So next up, we go to the Villain Spectacular, and there's three of these shows a night, so there's generally a lot more space to be had, and. I got a really good view. I had left them for this because I was really tired. I was standing on my feet. My feet were killing me. I left. I went and got some popcorn. I sat down. Um, and then I got up and I kind of moved in. And there was like plenty of room to just to get in and see this. Because people had started, the, the, the parade was next. And people were prioritizing space for the fire, for the parade because they know you were kicked off the street. I didn't care about being kicked off the street so i got a really good view i'm amazed i took this with my iphone that i i've never really done very good at, at grabbing pictures from the show but the sanderson sisters the actresses that play the sanderson sisters are they never disappoint they are incredibly good if you've seen the movie hocus pocus then you know you're very familiar with their voices and how those actor sound and they portray all three of the sisters so very well 
and um, and and they ad lib sometimes, so things are are said differently, different shows, and uh, not a lot, but just enough that you know that you know that it's actually them speaking. That it's not, you know, when you hear the villains sing, you know, the villains singing is is a recorded lip syncing situation. But when the Sanderson sisters are singing, when they're speaking, it's live and it's incredible. And so it's, it's again, one of my favorite shows that Disney does. And I, and it's because of that. It's because it has that, um, that performance aspect to it. That's just incredible. And, um, and I loved Hocus Pocus. So I enjoy that story. And so it's fun to see the villains. We see villains that we don't normally get to see on this night. And so it's always fun when they come out and people applaud for them because they're, you know, they're the, you know, the bowler hat guy and Hades and um, Dr. Facilier and some that you just don't see on a normal everyday basis. And so it's just incredibly fun. I, I love this show so much. And I was excited for our friends to see the show because they had never seen it before. And so I was really excited for them to see it. So that made it even more fun because I was excited about them seeing it. I like this show 10 times more than the movie. 20 <laughs> times more than the second movie. I'm going to guess 30 times more than the third movie when it comes out. But I, I enjoyed the second movie. I, I like Hocus Pocus. It's fun to me. So, both, But there's both, one particular part movies. of the Hocus Pocus movie that shows up really nice in here. The, the song. The, the song yeah. is really good. And, when it's she a good finale. Like, I put a spell on you. It's just, I'm and they put some of the words up on the castle so you can sing along. And so that's a lot of fun. And so it's just really great. I, one of the other reasons why I love it is because, you know, the cast members love this show. You always know when the cast, when cast members are in the audience, and the reason why I know it's them is because I'll, I'll talk with them and I'll, I find out I, I, I usually talk while we're waiting I didn't this year because we had friends that we were talking with, but I usually talk and, and there's often cast members that they just love that show so much. And so they're just screaming and singing along and cheering for them. And it, so it, you have this familiarity in the crowd with it too, where you just know that people love this show so very much. And so it's a lot of fun. We head down to the front of the park. Yeah. There's a handicapped area right by the entrance. Uh, to the fire by the fire station yeah and there's even even if you don't go there there's plenty of space around the hub it only has one downside and you can see it kind of in this video their picture it's a little bit bright which is good and bad it's bad because when you're looking at it with your normal eye it's it's a little bit it's a little bit bright at the same time if you're taking pictures it is so much easier to get a clear picture of some of these things so really depends on what you're trying. But they don't they don't turn the lights out in this area as much as they do other parts. They because don't because a lot of traffic. There is traffic because if you notice, like for example, like you can see where the there's a person that's standing behind the rope that's dressed um like the, the Scarlet Witch. And that section is actually where people can cross to exit the park. And so during the parade, at certain parts of the parade, they open that rope and they usher the people to come through. So that's why the park is, is still lit a little bit more at that point, because they are trying to, to get people funneled out of the park, the people that are wanting to leave. And so that is a little bit distracting. But again, if you're looking for a great place to see the parade and someplace that's not super crowded, that is is a great place where you can get a view without having to sit and wait for an hour and a half to save a spot. Um, oh, and this was one of my favorite additions. You've got Minnie and Daisy and Clarabelle dressed as the Sanderson sisters for Halloween. And I love that so much. Um, it was incredibly cute. Um, but anyway, this was just a really, I was so excited that we found the spot because we, again, we had friends that had never been to the party before, so they had never seen the parade before. And I really wanted them to see the parade, but we didn't want to take an hour and a half out of our night to sit and find a spot. And so this just worked out perfectly. I was very excited about it. The other one you can see Mickey, I mean, Minnie in the back there. I think that's all I have. That's one of the things is, is there are, it is a 360 degree view. So, so just a few of the highlights, one of Val's favorite things. 
Yeah. My favorite so, unit in this particular parade is the haunted mansion. And so you have the butlers who are um, working with the shovels and making the sparks and dancing with it. And then you have the bride and you, ha- so, so Constance is in it. You have, you know, the tombstones, you have the hitchhiking ghosts, you have the ballroom dancers. So there's just a huge unit that's just dedicated to the haunted mansion. And it's just so amazing. Which is pretty obvious. The dancers are so fun. If you, if you haven't seen it, Lewis actually posted, I think last week was the last week or a couple of weeks ago, you posted last year's boo to you parade. And so if you've never seen it, take a minute to go back and watch that video because the, like I said, the, the parade is, is so much fun, but the haunted mansion unit to see the dancers and the way they dance and the butlers and the, the, the shovels, it's just, it's worth your time for sure. And I'll post video of this year's soon. I know this is your favorite part, but come on. The best part of this parade. It's not. It's the chicken. It's not because it is so out there. It's the one I've, I've been every year thinking this is going to go away because it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, the chicken singing a different song, which is probably why they keep it because they'd have to change the tune, but it's the best because it clucks out the song and that's how all music should be in parades. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is this this is my least favorite part of the parade. Let's just put it that way. This is my his favorite, and it's my least favorite. And we like the change they made this year. They took out the um, they took out the Incredibles and the Martians from Toy Story, and they added more villains. Yeah, because it makes more sense, right? So we have Ursula now. Ursula was awesome. Moving quite spry for a sea urchin on land. <laughs> you have more villains, Gaston, Evil Stepsisters. Yeah, Oogie Boogie. Silly, yeah, Oogie Boogie, the bowler hat guy. And then it kind of finishes with Evil Queen, some jazz playing, skeletons. Yeah. Good stuff. It's really not so scary. It's not so scary. It was just a fun night uh, all the way around. It was just, I think, one of my favorite not so scary parties we've ever done. And that says a lot because, like I said, it's my favorite night of the year. So I I really just had the most wonderful time. Good friends will make make things better. They do. They really do. I mean, it's, if you go by yourself, it's a great experience. It is because I've, I've gone by myself before you've gone by yourself. We've, we've done that before and it still is a fun night. Like I said, I love it, but it's a different kind of fun. It's more of a task oriented kind of fun. When you go with another person, it's, it's fun. And and the same, same thing. You're still a little bit more task focused as you add more people. It gets more of a, of a group think. And, and the, the more in sync the people are, the better it is. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you give a family, family gets tired, family gets grumpy. That's great. You know, you have a great time. You get with a bunch of people who are all the same mind at the same time, which was the first time I've ever, ever done this. It's, it's more been a conference where I've had these kind of situations where I've been with people and a lot of people doing the same things and having fun at the same time outside of family that it was just a really great time. We'll talk more about that. It was. Well, next- and I have to say, because I don't know if we're going to talk more about not so scary. So I do want to mention this. We we decided to do, we, Lewis and I are not costume people. We don't typically dress in costumes. We don't cosplay. And so we usually wear, you know, Halloween themed Disney shirts when we go and, and that kind of thing. But we decided as a group, since we were going with our friends, um, we were huge. Several of us in the group are huge Ted Lasso fans. We watched Ted Lasso together. And so we, we talked about it a lot and we, we watched it together. And so we decided as a group that we were going to go um, together in matching jerseys. 
um, from just AFC Richmond jerseys. And we put our, well, most everybody put their Twitter handle on the back. I didn't on mine because mine wouldn't fit, but we put our names on the back of the jerseys. And one of the fun things about the night, because like I said, Liz and I don't typically dress up. I enjoy looking at everybody else's costumes. And so all night long, as we were traveling through the party, um, people were were yelling Richmond forever and go AFC Richmond and go Richmond. And it was just so much fun. And we actually even, we stopped in at Monsters Inc. to watch the show for a minute. And because we were all together in a group and we were dressed alike, they actually talked to each one of us during the uh, Monsters Inc. show. And so we each got to speak and, and they, you know, made jokes with us and, and we kidded around with them a little bit. And so it was so fun. And I think that that just added to the, to what made the night so special because we were having so much fun together, but also we were getting these reactions all night of, you know, go Richmond. And so it was just, that even made it more fun. So yeah, we had a blast. All right. So that's, that's our trip report. We'll come back next week and talk a little more about the meetup and our upcoming trips and goals and things. We have a, Quite a few trips planned this uh, coming up until January. That's all I got, Val. You got anything? <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to talking to you again. All right. Let's say goodbye.